Hey, this is Brock Lemires. We're continuing our study of embedded systems designed by looking at program flow instructions. In this video, we're going to look at how to implement if else statements in assembly. So an if else statement is one of probably one of the most common programming uh, constructs within C uh, and a lot of high level languages. And basically it allows you to selectively execute statements. Okay. And what you do is you have an if part that has a Boolean condition. And if that is true, you will execute the statements associated with the if portion. Otherwise, if it is not true, you will then go to the else portion of the statement and you will execute the statements associated with that. Uh, you can certainly have multiple if else statements nested within each other, or you can also implement else if structures by just chaining them together. But that's about the entire explanation of an if else. Uh, let's do an example. So take a look at uh, what we're going to do here. We are going to have an if else statement, and I'm using curly brackets all over the place here. Uh, this is, I do it like this to space it out <laughs> so it's re more readable. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have, let's just make a variable called count one, okay? And we'll initialize it to zero. And then I'm going to go into a, a infinite loop, okay? So I do a while one, and I need a looping structure. So this is basically just main jump main. Uh, and when we're going to have this construct, we're going to have, if this variable is equal to 10, I want to set it to zero. Otherwise I want to increment it. Okay. So basically we're going to have this and, and this is going to increment each time. This is actually about the same logic as a for loop, but we'll just do it as an if else statement. This is just another way to do it. <clears throat> okay. So here we go. Let's, let's do that. So I am going to fire up a new co-composer project. And let's call it ASM flow if else. And we'll go ahead and make it an assembly. And boom, I'm up and running. Okay. All right, I'm going to come down here. Um, <clears throat> let's do it like this. Let's do, instead of setting up this variable uh, CNT1 count one in memory, let's use a register. Okay, we you can use you can do whatever you want when you program an assembly. So I'm gonna actually have uh, and let's use R15. <laughs> we never use R15 for anything. So let's do this. I'm gonna initialize uh, R15 as count, and I'm gonna say R15 is equal to CNT1. So that's our variable. Okay, that's our variable. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a while loop. Let's call it while, and let's do an end while, just so we can kind of keep track of it. And let's implement the while one. So loop forever. Here's how you loop forever. When you get to the end of this loop, you're just going to do jump while, okay? And again, a lot of times it'll be main jump main, but just because we're doing a while loop, let's just implement it like this. So th this is gonna incur, it's gonna initialize a variable. We're doing it in R15, put a zero in it to initialize it with a value, and then we're gonna get into an infinite loop. All right, now we're finally ready to do some if else statements, okay? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go pretty heavy on labels here. So let's put an address ca label called if, and then let's do another one called else, and then let's do another one called end if, and you'll see why we have to have this ending label here in a second, okay? Okay, so here's my if part. Here, my if part. <clears throat> All I wanna do is I wanna check to see if R15 is equal to 10, okay? So all I do is I do compare R15 to 10. Okay, so that's how I did. And if they are equal to each other, what'll happen is the Z flag will be asserted. Okay, the Z flag will be asserted. So that means what I'm gonna do is, let's see, so I'm gonna compare it right after that though. Okay, right after that, I'm gonna say, if it is, I want to do my stuff, okay? But if it isn't, I don't wanna execute. So I actually need to put a jump right here that is a J N Z to else, because right here, I'm gonna list what my logic is for this part of the if else, okay? So let's do this part right here. Let's put this instruction, uh, R15, no, I'm gonna do, uh, 
move, move dot W, and I'm going to do pound zero in R15. So this instruct, this statement right here is this statement right here. And now let's think through the logic. I'm going to check to see if it is 10. Okay, so I'm going to do is, is count one equal to 10? And then you say, if it is, you want to execute this instruction. Okay, but if it isn't 10, you got to get over this instruction. Okay, so you have to have your jump if not zero right here in order to avoid executing the statements associated with the if portion of the if else. So that's why I had to put J and Z here to get to else, okay? Now I want you to think about something. Move, you did the statement and now I'm marching through. So let's say that R15 was 10, so count one was 10. You don't take the jump, you execute the statement and now you're right here. What is the problem? The problem is that if you don't have some program flow instruction, you're going to march right into the else part and execute its instructions. So you actually have to then put a jump, okay, to end if. And that's going to jump you over the, the statements associated with the else part. And now under else, all I can do its statement, which is the increment. So I'm going to do inc wr15. And then I actually don't need to do a jump to end if because I'm going to go there anyway. Okay. So if you look at those instructions, it's kind of, it's pretty simple, actually, if you think about it. Uh, let's get some of these spaces out of here so we can kind of see more stuff on the screen. But let's go ahead and fire this up and see what happens. Okay. So I'm firing up my session here. And what I want to look at is, let's just look at R15. That's really the, the big one. Okay, so let's go down, way down here. Never use R15. It's all the way at the bottom. And let's go ahead and put it in decimal. Okay, and let's put a, let's put that right there. And let's go ahead and run to it. Okay, so now we're going to execute this C code. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is int count one. Well, I just made a decision. You're going into R15. That's that statement. <laughs> and I'll treat you as an integer. And now I'm going to initialize it to zero. So I step, R15 is one. Now I come into my if, I'm in my infinite loop, and I'm going to check to see if it's 10, okay? So I'm going to do check if it's 10, okay? It is not. And I can, I know that because I can look up here at the Z flag and it's a zero, okay? So that means that that, that compare did not assert the Z flag. So now what I'm going to do is this is gonna jump into the else part because this Boolean statement is not true. So watch what happens. I do it, it takes the jump, heads down to the else part, and I'm gonna go ahead and increment R15. And then I get down to this, the essentially where I'm at in the program right here is this curly bracket that will come back up and loop forever. So now it's gonna jump back up to the, to the while loop, which was here. Since there's no instructions, it comes down to the first instruction. So now I'm sitting here and now let's watch this go again. So I'm going to come down here. Notice, see what happened? It compared. Is it equal to 10? No, it's not. Let's do the else part, which means it's going to increment it. So every time through here, I'm sitting here and I'm not executing the code associated with uh, the if portion. I'm only executing the else portion every time through as R15 is incremented through. And so now I'm approaching the point where I'm going to increment it to 9. And now... Is it 10? No. Now it's 10. Let's see what happens here. I'm going to now compare it to 10. Boom. The Z flag is going to be asserted. Look at that. And now I'm, what I'm going to do is I will execute the code associated with the if portion. So I'm going to go ahead and step. It did not take the jump. Did not take the jump because our condition was true. Or, or, excuse me. It was not equal to zero. And so what happened, I mean, it did not take this because it was equal to zero. And so then it's going to do this move. I go ahead and do this. It sets R15 back to zero, which, which implements this part of the program, the control one or count one is equal to zero. And now I'm at a situation where I, gotta, I don't want to execute the else part. So I got to jump over the else part. So I go ahead and do that. And I'm off and running again. Okay, so now this, one, this program will actually run forever uh, because it will just sit here and increment zero to 10 for ever and ever. And that's pretty much it. That's It's simple, uh, but it really shows you this whole notion of like you have 
code as associated with the if part, you have code associated with the else part, and you're only going to execute one of them. So you have to get these jumping structures in place that allow you to jump over one or execute this and then jump over the other. All right, that is it. That is an if else statement in assembly. Remember, go ahead and subscribe to my channel to stay up to date on all the latest videos and see ya.